In a previous module, we've looked at how to get data out of Cassandra into Spark and from Spark RDDs back into Cassandra through the Spark Cassandra connector. Here we're going to look at a few optimizations, a few little things you might look at that will make those operations run a little faster. Let's take a look at some straightforward but naive and suboptimal code for counting records from a Cassandra query. Here we do a query on the movies by actor table. We're looking for all Johnny Depp movies released prior to 2015. At the end of that where clause, we've got an RDD containing Cassandra row records. We can call the count action on that RDD and we'll get a count back. Easy enough but that's suboptimal and let's take a look at why. The Cassandra query is gonna create an RDD with all those records and then we're going to have to iterate over all of them to create the count. We would rather not move that data around. If we could get the counting to happen in Cassandra, we don't have to serialize all those records, get them out of the Cassandra process into the Spark process. There's a bunch more work to do there that we'd rather avoid. And here is Cassandra count to save the day. It works just like count, except that you call it on an RDD that's generated from a Cassandra query. The counting isn't really done on the RDD. It's gonna be done in the Cassandra process by a CQL query that actually does a select count rather than taking all that data out and having Spark do the count in the RDD. The optimized code, as you can see here, is very similar to the original code, except that we call Cassandra count, and it's gonna run a lot faster. Now, there are some situations where this is inapplicable. Let's look at a couple of examples. Up top, we see a case where we would want to use the regular count because we're doing that filter operation. So we do the query on all movies by actor, but we only want movies whose rating is 6.0 or above. Now, if you look at the schema over to the right, you'll notice that the rating column is not a clustering column. So we're not gonna be able to generate CQL to do that query. The, the driver can't do that. It's gonna have to get all those rows back into an RDD and then filter them, create a new RDD, which will then count in the normal way. It's nothing to be worried about. Count is gonna work as well as it always has. It's just not a time to pursue that optimization. If you look at the second example down below, count is a better choice because we need that RDD lying around to do more things with. We have a three line query. We're doing a select on movies by actor where actor is Johnny Depp and release here is less than 2015. And we do want the count of that RDD. And that's that next line there, print line movies count but then we also want to take that and make it into a pair RDD. We want to group those movies by release year and count the movies by year. We're going to do two operations on that RDD, so there's no sense doing a Cassandra count and then making the RDD and doing our operation on it that way. We'll just go ahead and not pursue the optimization in that case. In the case where all we're doing is a count on a query, Cassandra count is a great option.